Good afternoon, and in this video we want to look at how to perform the first exercise in Excel. And the first part of the exercise, we just want to be able to input numbers into cells. So I've just clicked in cell A1, and if I hit 5, the number 5 appears, for example. And if I go into cell B1, I can hit 5.1, and if I click out of that cell, then that information is recorded in these cells. All right. Now, a second way to import data into Excel is if I have a file. In this case, it's a text file, and it has two columns of numbers, and these numbers are tab delimited. And what that means is... Um, the space in between these numbers is represented by a tab, okay? And if I just highlight all these numbers, I can then do one of several things. The most common way is to hit Control C, and that stands for copy. And if I come back here into Excel and click in the cell that I want my first um, number in and hit Control V, now all of a sudden that data appears, okay? And so that is how you can import uh, data into Excel. So Control C is copy, and then Control V is paste. And uh, one of the other things that we may want to do is to format cells. And so to format cells, what we can do is highlight all of the data we want to format. And to do that, hover over the column that you are interested in, and then left click, and then drag over, and I've highlighted both of these columns of data. And then to um, format them however I want. Let's say I want to limit the number of decimal places. Now that the data is highlighted, right click anywhere in the highlighted area and this menu will come up. And we're interested in the format cells menu. And down here with this number, this allows me to limit the number of decimal places. So let's say I want to round everything to three decimal places. And then uh, you can pull this up to, to see it a little bit better. And hit OK. And now notice everything has been rounded to three decimal places. So that's how you can round your numbers. Uh, Excel is very uh, robust. It, it can do a lot of different things. And one of the things we may want to do is find the sum of several numbers. Right? So I've just put some random numbers in here. And these are in your sheet uh, in Blackboard as well. And if I just highlight all these numbers, okay, you'll notice down here that there's some information. First of all, the average is 13.2 of all of these numbers. There are 10 numbers being taken into consideration, and the sum of all these numbers is 132. And that would make sense if the sum is 132 and there are 10 numbers, then the average should be 13.2. But there are other ways to get that information as well. So to find the uh, let's say we want to add all of them up and we want to use an Excel function to do so. What we do is click into the cell we want the formula to go into and hit the equal sign. Okay, so whenever you hit an equal sign in Excel, it's expecting a formula. And so what we'll do is hit SUM, and that means the sum. Okay, so that means the sum of whatever. And so then when I hit parentheses, it now is wanting data. So I'm going to hit, or I'm going to click rather, in my first cell, and then drag down. And if this is all of the information I want to take the sum of, I'm done. And at this point, you can do one of two things. You can either close the parentheses explicitly, or you can just hit the Enter button, and it will automatically close the parentheses for you. And you get the sum of 132. If I want to find the average of this data, I can hit the equal button and type in the formula average. Again, bring up the parentheses, highlight all my date numbers, and this time I'm not going to close the parentheses so you can actually see it. Um, that Excel will automatically do it for me. If I hit the enter button, there I go. It gives me the average of 13.2, and again, those two numbers agree with our uh, numbers down here. But what if I want to also find something like the standard deviation of the data? And remember, the standard deviation is like the spread, the amount of spread in the data. So there are several different formulas for the standard deviation in Excel. 
and we will usually use STDEVA, all right, um, which is one of the abbreviations for standard deviation, and it's the standard formula um, rather than some of the other statistical things that are in uh, Excel. And so again, if I just hit STDEVA, open parenthesis, and highlight my data, and hit enter, there I go. The standard deviation of my formula, or of my set of numbers, rather, is right here. Um, one thing that we're often going to be interested in is plotting data. Um, but I'm going to hold off on that for a minute, and let's just see how we can uh, add numbers from different cells. So again, anytime you start a um, cell with an equal sign, then that tells Excel that a formula is coming. And you can either use pre-scripted formulas, like some average standard deviation, uh, or you can type in your own formula. So let's say that we've made, made two length measurements, and we need to add them together, and we need to know what they are. So I can just click in my first length after my equal sign, and then hit the plus sign, and then click on my second length. And notice that both cells uh, have different colors, they're different color coordinated, and the color coordination corresponds to the outline. And when I hit enter, it will now add those two cells up. So you can use uh, a plus sign, a division sign, multiplication, subtraction, uh, parentheses, and the caret is the exponent, and you can also type in an SQRT for square root. So all of these are valid symbols mathematically. Once you're in a formula, if you need to use these in a formula, these are the um, appropriate symbols for addition, division, multiplication, subtraction, order of operations, exponents, and square roots. Right. Um, before we come to this set of data, let's go to the plotting tab. It's the exact same set of data, and I'll talk a little bit about what's, what's unique here. So to actually plot two sets of data, which we will often want to do if we have, say, um, some position and some time data, we want, may want to find out how the position and time are related. So to plot data, click in your first cell of your data, and then drag over to the second column and pull the entire thing down, and now all of your data is highlighted. What you can do then is click on uh, Insert, and you can go to this Charts tab, and the charts that we will most often be interested in are the scatter charts. Okay, And we want the chart that has no connecting lines. We don't want the line options, because we're going to fit the data with a trend line, and we don't want our lines to get confused. OK, here's our base chart. And we can label our axes if we want. So um, you'll notice if you click on the plus button next to the chart, this menu will come up, and axis titles, and my x and y axis titles have appeared. If I unclick that button, they disappear. If I unclick the chart title, it disappears, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're not going to worry too much about uh, titling these just yet. I want to show you more about how, what to actually do with the data. So now that we have this, I want to fit it with a trend line, and I want to see what kind of trend line uh, is the best. And to do that, you can just ho hover over any given data point. It doesn't matter which one. And whichever one you do, you'll see that it has its coordinates. And then I want to right click. And this menu will come up. And we want to go down to Add Trend Line. And then this will come up. And it has some different functions that I can fit the data with, right? Linear, logarithmic, polynomial, etc. And I want to pick the best one. I want to pick the best option. And uh, only a few of them are highlighted, and that's actually due to this 0, 0 here. Some of the functions don't like the 0, 0. So we'll leave those alone. And um, what you're going to most often want to do is display the equation on the chart. And by the way, it will always default to linear. So anytime you are fitting data, in Excel, it will always default to linear. 
if you want to try a logarithmic trend. Sorry about that. Let's come back over here. Um, if we want to try a logarithmic trend, it might not work. Ah, I bet I know why. Let's let's try a polynomial. There we go. So it's shifted. So if we display the equation on the chart, and I'm going to display the r squared value, and um, notice as I choose between these different equations, the uh, trend line shifts a little bit. Okay. And in general, what your goal is going to be is going to be pick the trend line that best fits the data. Now, in this case, we only have linear and polynomial open to us with this particular set of data. And a general rule of thumb in physics is unless you have a theoretical reason to choose the polynomial, you want to avoid it. And the reason being, you can always add more terms in a polynomial and your fit will always get a little bit better and better and better. Uh, but we don't want to just arbitrarily add uh, terms and polynomials. So unless otherwise specified due to some uh, theory or some reason you think you should fit it with a polynomial, we generally want to avoid it. Now that we're going to make an exception to that rule with gravity uh, when we measure gravity, but for now, we'll avoid it. So we're going to stick with this uh, trend line. All right, we're going to stick with the linear trend. And our equation is 0.9. 003 uh, times x, so 0 0.9003 represents our slope, and negative 0 0.0257 is our intercept. And this r squared value is essentially a measure of how good that trend fits the data. Numbers for r squares that are close to 1 are really good fits. Um, and numbers that are close to zero are generally poor fits. Now, you do also have to make some interpretations with that number. You can have really good R squared values with uh, fits, uh, with, with sets of data that are contrived to actually not be correlated with each other. Uh, but in general, for our purposes, if two things look correlated, they're, they're generally going to be correlated. So, uh, one of the big questions, especially in the calculus and the algebra-based courses that we're going to be in, uh, is what is the uncertainty on my slope, right? What is the uncertainty on my slope and what is the uncertainty on my intercept? And we're interested in these because, let's say I have uh, a position versus time graph like I have here, and the position versus time graph is linear then the slope of that position versus time graph represents an object's velocity. So I may want to measure the speed of an object, but not only do I want to measure the speed of the object, but I want to measure how well I know that speed. And that's where uncertainty comes in. And that's where we're going to use this Linest formula that is mentioned in your write-up. So to use the Linest formula, what you want to do is go into a blank cell, and highlight two columns and then drag down about four or five rows and leave it exactly like this and then type in exactly this formula equal sign then linest and parenthesis now you'll see that it wants the known y's the known x's and then two constants constant and stats now these we're going to use as ones okay we're going to fill these in as ones but first things first we have to highlight the known y's so we highlight the known y's column known x's column one comma one and then close our parentheses now here's a key we must hit control shift enter it will not work if you just hit enter so we hit control shift enter and we get a bunch of data now there's a couple of things to note here all right first let's go back to our plot and our slope was 0.9, and our intercept was negative 0.025. And in our formula, that's the first two cells in the first column, right? Now the cells underneath represent the uncertainties. So this number right here represents the uncertainty on my slope, and this number represents the uncertainty on my intercept. And we would typically round those when necessary.